thank you for joining us. My name is Doug. If you don't know, my wife Stephanie and I, we had the privilege of starting Rust City. This is our 12th year as a church. Is that right, Steph? 12 years? I don't know. It all becomes a blur at a certain point, right? Days are long and years are short. But hey, I, uh, before I jump into this series we're in, you in five years, I just want to say a couple things really quickly. One, uh, man, I prayed this year and I asked the Holy Spirit, would he give me a word for this year for our church? Like the word for our church this year, something that we can kind of make a banner towards of like, God, what do you want to do at Rust City in 2023? And so I prayed and I asked and I was just inviting him and I was talking to a friend of mine and this kind of came out of our conversation. And as it came out of our conversation, I said, that is the word that God has for our church this year. So I want to give it to you. And I just want to encourage you. This is a word for me personally. I believe this is a word for our church corporately. And this could be a word for you and your house as well as you take it and run with it. And here's what I felt the Lord say. I felt like he said, Doug, in 2023, I want to see my church be totally free in 2023. Now, that means totally free physically, totally free emotionally, totally free spiritually, totally free financially. I'm looking to set some people free for the, who the sun sets free is free indeed. Do I have anybody in the house of God today who says, man, I want to be totally free in 2023? If not, get on out of here. No, I'm kidding. I just want to encourage you, like, that's not just some, first of all, I do love rhyming, so I do love the fact that it rhymes, but it's more than just a cute rhyme. Uh, my prayer is that you make that a banner for your year, and you say, God, I'm declaring for this year over my house, we're going to be totally free in 2023. We're going to be totally free emotionally from the things that have afflicted us and caused us all kinds of issues. God, spiritually, I'm going to go to a new level that I've never gone before. God, financially, I'm going to stop being in debt to the things of this world, and I'm going to be free like you intended me to be. God, physically, whatever it is, I'm declaring over me and my house, we are going to be totally free in 2023. Amen? Amen. So I'm, you're going to hear it more than just today, but I just want to give you that little thought today that we are believing for this year to be totally free in 2023. And, and I think something that's appropriate to help us get that started is a 21 days of prayer and fasting. I'm inviting you and asking you if this is part of your church, this Rust City is your home, that you would go on a journey with us starting on January 22nd. You have these cards at your seat, that you would go on a 21 days of prayer and fasting with us. What Some of you might say, I don't know what fasting is. Fasting is when you deny yourself of something of this world, and you instead you substitute it with a thing of God. So if you choose to do no food, when you're hungry, you say, God, let this hunger in my stomach turn into hunger for you and who you are. And, and what it is, it's a reset and a detox. I don't know if anybody needs a detox from the cookies this holiday season, right? It's a detox for our souls to say, God, I might have allowed it to be polluted with a lot of junk and a lot of things. God, I am choosing for 21 days to give up of something of this world, and I'm going to choose to put my focus on you and what you want to do. And I believe for those of us who really want to experience some freedom in 2023, a great way to get started is on January 22nd as a church family. We are going into a time, a holy time with Jesus, to give up of what we have and to say, God, I am fasting something to show that I want to be closer to you and I want to detox some of this world out of my life. Amen? Amen. And so I'm going to invite you. You can scan it, do it with us. Our team has done a great job of giving like a text every day that will encourage you on how to pray and some things to do. And we want to do this journey corporately together. And I just believe God wants to do a supernatural thing in the body of Christ this year. Amen? And so let's be about that. I'm in a series. We're just getting started. This is the intro. This is part one of five parts. You in five years. You in five years. That's 60 months for those of us who are math majors, okay, 12 times five. And 60 months from now or five years from now, I wonder who you're going to be. I wonder, not, 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 I wonder who you're going to be when it comes to emotional, physical, mental, spiritual health. In five years, I'd like you, don't say it out loud, but I want you to think of how old you are today, and I want you to plus five, and I want you to think about that, just that number for a minute. Oh, Jesus. That number, painful, painful. Uh, uh, but the reality is, I wonder if you are where you thought you'd be five years ago today. 
And so, so here's what, so, so, so five years from now, you know, we're all going to be five years older, and, and there's some things that I pray that we do in our lives that make us who God has called us to be. I, I, getting ready for this, I, there's apps for everything. You know, you can get an app for anything you want to. There's an age app that you could put in how old you are today with a picture, and it will naturally age you for as many years as you want to set it to. So I did a picture of me, and I said, what do I look like five years from now? Okay, so I just want to show you real quick. This is me five years from now. Bam! (laughs) I'm wearing the same jacket. Isn't that awesome? (laughs) Stephanie, this is what you got to look forward to, baby, so just drink it in, girl. Drink it in right now. You're married to Santa Claus. Get over it. Ho, ho, ho. Now, to be fair, because I did it to myself, I thought I should do it to Stephanie as well, my wife. Because if I'm going to look like that, she's going to look a certain way as well, right? And so I put in her picture. I put in five years. And, and this is what the results were. Show them what she looks like in five years. Wait. Get out of here. How do you look younger in five years? I don't understand how this works. Husbands, take note of that, Okay process. <laughs> Baby, you look younger. Actually, that's true story. That's a picture of you from a few years ago. And I don't know about your wife, but my wife just gets hotter with age. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but five years from now, I wonder who you and I are going to be. I got to tell you the truth. I think too often we overestimate what we, what we can do in the short term, and we underestimate what can happen in the long term. I think we overestimate, like right now, like some of you, it's New Year, and you're like, okay, I'm going to get my butt in shape. You're going to be those people who show up at the gym for like three and a half days, and you're like, I'm going to do this, and I'm all about it, and like you really quickly want to jump in and just, and, and we overestimate how much gains we can make in a day, and we underestimate how much we can do over a long period of time. I, I made a list, actually. I made two lists, to be honest with you. I made a positive and negative list of the things that we could get accomplished in five years. Now, there's more than this. This is just some of the first things that I could jot down as I was thinking about it. But in five years, let me give you the positive list first, and we'll go into the, to the not-so-positive list next. Five things that I could do in the next five years. Number one, I, I could learn a new language. You and I could learn to speak a new language. If you wanted to, you could get Rosetta Stone or some app or whatever, and you could learn a second language, a third language, a fourth language, whatever it is. You could learn a new language in five years. Some of us, that could be Pig Latin. I'm not sure, but you could learn. Like six people know what Pig Latin is, okay? Uh, or it's just a really bad joke. Number, another thing. In five years, you can get a degree. You know, you could go to school, you could sign up for something, and you could get a degree in something, hopefully in the next five years. You know, you could do that if you wanted to. Uh, How about this? In the next five years, you could learn a new skill. You could go on YouTube, you could learn something new, you could take a new thing, you could say, I want to learn how to build birdhouses, and I'm going to commit to that, and I'm going to do it, and in five years from now, we can look at your beautiful birdhouses. You can learn a new skill. Hey, you could get physically healthy in the next five years. You could commit to say, over time, I'm going re- to review how I look at food. I'm going to start getting more exercise in me. And I can be physically healthy in the next five years. Here's another interesting one. You could read 60 books in the next five years. And check this out. If you just read one book a month. And if that even feels too daunting for you, the average book that is released is about 200 pages. You could read six pages a day, give or take, and you would accomplish 60 books in five years. You'd be like so smart and such a scholar. How about reading the Bible? For those of us who are Christians in the room and we're like, man, I just feel like maybe as a Christian I should read the Bible. This is what I've given my life to. I, I, I don't, I've never read it cover to cover. It's very daunting. It seems too much for me. Well, check this out. If you committed to reading two chapters a day, let's say an Old Testament and a New Testament, two chapters a day, in five years you have read the entire Bible three times over. Three times over, you've read the entire Bible, Old Testament, New Testament, one chapter a day of each, two chapters total. You have read the entire Bible in five years. This is an interesting one. For those of us who have a newborn or a baby, right, and you have a child, right, if you wanted to set your child up to retire with some money in the bank, right, if you wanted to bless them on their way out, you would probably be gone, you'd be with Jesus, but they would still be on this planet. If you committed $3 a day, 
to give to their retirement fund over the first five years of their life. When they turn five, you cut it off. Over time, with compound interest, which we'll talk about a little later today, you, they would give them, by the time of retirement, half a million dollars in the bank. I immediately text my parents and said, you failed me. <laughs> then I looked at my three kids and said, I got to get to work. <laughs> $3 a day for the first five years of their life, they'd have half a million dollars in the bank when they need to retire. That's crazy. It's the power of longevity and doing the right things over time. $3 a day doesn't seem like much, but over time, it's a lot. Now, I also wrote a negative list, and, and this might, might be cringy, but we just need to get through it. In the next five years, you could just binge watch every Netflix show that you love. Ouch. I love Netflix, but sometimes we waste way too many hours. How about this? You could play some video game where you become ranked for it, then nobody cares, and actually most people lose more respect for you because they find out about it. You could candy crush all day. I don't know. I don't mean to pick on candy crush. I don't care. I actually like candy crush. But How about this? In five years, you could rack up a bunch of debt that you don't know how to get out of. How about this? You could, this is a tough one. You could be finishing the details of a messy divorce because you probably fo focus on those first four things way too much and not your spouse and your marriage and caring for it. In the next five years, it could be long enough for you to get really, 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 really addicted to something bad. Drugs, alcohol, pornography. Next five years, you could be entrapped with an addiction. Hey, in the next five years, you could go through five or six different jobs that you don't give enough time to and longevity to, and you just keep cycling from one place to another place to another place, thinking that's going to find your happiness and purpose, and in all reality, that will never find your happiness and purpose. How about this? In five years, this is the last one, and I'm going to move on from this. In five years, you can make a really good case to be mad at God for how he didn't show up in your life. In the next five years, you choose which way you're going to follow. This is why Jesus said it so powerfully. Choose this day who you will serve. Choose this day where you will give your time, your talent, your treasure, your attention to, and choose over time what you're going to be about and watch where you are in five years. Let me give you a scripture because some of us might just think this is a self-help talk. Romans chapter 13 says this in verse 11, and I'm going to read out of the message version. It's very interesting how they word it. But make sure you don't get so absorbed and exhausted in taking care of your day-to-day -day obligations that you lose track of time, doze off, and are oblivious to God. Don't get so wrapped up in just you doing you all day that you miss what God is trying to do in you today. The night is about over and the dawn is breaking. Be up and awake and watch what God is doing. God is putting the finishing touches on the salvation work he began when we first believed. I wish I had time to walk you through what it means when God started a salvation work with you. That means that he is not just a great starter. He's a great finisher. And that salvation that he started in you, he will see through to the end of making you perfect in him. I ain't got time for that today. It says this, we can't afford to waste a minute. We must not squander these precious daylight hours on indulgences and sleeping around and bickering and, gra and grabbing everything in sight. Get out of bed and get dressed. Don't loiter or linger waiting until the very last minute. How should you get dressed? Dress yourself in Christ and be up and about it. That's a great scripture, y'all. That's, that's like a you need to read that again scripture. <laughs> Like, get dressed in Christ and get up and be about what he's called you to in this life. Quit thinking your time's over. I, I try to tell this to people when they get older all the time. If your time is up with Jesus, he'd bring you home. Your last breath will be done. If you're still breathing, God has got plans and purposes on the inside of you. Your work is not yet complete. You know, I want to say this. And this is kind of, this series, five part. Look, most people come to church 1.7 times a, a month. That's what, like, that data tells us. I'm going to encourage you. This, 
first part is like a five part of what we're going to talk about of this you in five years. And so I'm going to give you kind of the big idea of what we're going to focus on. But you've got four more weeks. I really encourage you to show up and be about it and get this inside of you. But our big idea for this whole series, this whole reason why we're talking about this is because of this. The ways you let in are the ways that you are set in. Process that with me. The ways that you let in, say let in, are the ways that you are set in. Say set in. So, so, so what you let in eventually over time sets into becoming who you are. So, so if you let in all the silliness of the world and all the craziness and you're so fixated on TikTok and this and that and the other, no wonder you are set in these addiction in these ways. But also the things, if you let in the things of God and what he wants to do, watch what he does as you do that. There's really four thoughts that I just want to give you. And if you're a note taker, I want you to write these down. As I read that scripture, there's kind of four thoughts or ideas that we can take from this scripture. The first one is this. Time is not on your side. Those of us who are getting older, I should get a little grumbly amen out of you. Mm, amen. Time is not on your side. When you're younger, you think you'll live forever. As you get older and you lose people and you start seeing life being life, you start realizing, man, this is like a vapor. Here one day, gone the next. Time is not on your side. So you thinking you can do this later is not always the case. Let me give you a scripture. Psalms 90 verse 11 says this. We live 70 years or so. And with luck, you might live 80. But what do we have to show for it? I'd hate to see you live your whole life. And you get to the end of it. And when you stand before God, he says, okay, what do you have to show for it? And you're like, well, I don't know. I mean, I just tried to get through every day. And he's like, let me show you what your life could have been if you would have trusted me instead of thinking you had to figure this all out on your own. Let me show you what your life would have been if you let discipline lead you instead of your feelings lead you everywhere you go. Let me show you what could have happened if you would have dedicated yourself to one thing and to be great at that one thing. Look at the impact you could have made. Too many of us are so afraid to make a mistake and not pick the right thing that we do nothing at all when we should be following after what God is telling us to do. Time is not on your side, my friend. I'm here to tell you that because I love you. Another thought that I have that I see is this. The future you is an extra, extravagated uh, uh, Exaggerated version of the current you. The future you is an exaggerated version of the current you. So like some of us, we think like, man, in the future, I'm going to be this or I'm going to be that. No, no. It's going to be an extravagated version of who you already are. It's who you already are is just going to get bigger and bigger. So check this out. If you're kind and you're generous and you're caring, as you get older, you're going to be more kind and generous and caring. If you're disciplined now, even in a little, as you get older, it's going to exaggerate and you're going to get more disciplined as you move forward. But can I tell you this? If you're greedy and selfish now, you're going to be more greedy and selfish later. If you're gossipy now and you're full of drama now, you're going to be a drama queen later. It's not going to get better. Whatever you are is just going to exaggerate and get more of. So you better choose today who you're going to be and how you're going to be, and what you're going to be about. Because what you let in is what you're going to be set in. How about this, number three? Time doesn't change you. It just reveals more of who you are. Time doesn't change you. It just reveals more of who you are. I've always said this. If you want to look at somebody's future, a good indicator is look at their past. Now, that doesn't mean God cannot show up and do a supernatural thing, but they also have to work out their salvation as God is doing that supernatural thing. That means they got to do their part as God's doing his part. So you can't just make it, oh, God's just going to do it. No, you've got a part to play in this too, my friend. And it's very clear to me, time doesn't just change you, but it reveals who you are. What you sow in time, you will reap. So sow good seed now and watch what you'll reap in the future. If you don't like it, if you don't like what you're getting, you need to change what you're doing. If you don't like the result, like, let's imagine I had a big board here and I could put an equation up, right? And I'd be like, this plus this equals this. And like we show you, like, this is what it results to. If you were mad at the results, 
you're silly to try to blame the results. You need to go back to the equation and say, what am I putting into the equation that keeps producing these results in my life? Like, 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 like no, uh, why do I keep running from relationship to relationship? Maybe it's a me issue, not everyone else issue. Why am I constantly frustrated thinking I don't have enough? Maybe it's something I need to look at in what I'm putting in that is giving me the results I don't like in my life. I think so often we want to blame the results. And, and the truth is quit looking at the results and start looking at what's getting you to those results. I think so often people want to blame a church when they're spiritually dry on the inside. They want to look at the Sunday morning one hour we're together and say, man, I just really want more. And the truth is you need to look at all the other hours of the week and what you're doing with Jesus during those hours of the week. Spiritually immature people blame outside things. Spiritually mature people look inward and say, God, what do you need to do in me to change what's going on in my life? We want to look for outside things to fix an internal issue on the inside of us. I didn't get many amens on that one. (laughs) Number four. This is my favorite one. Ongoing consistency is much more important than short-term intensity. Ongoing consistency is much more important than short-term intensity. I've already made fun of gym people early in the year, but let me just do it again. There are people, I, I, I enjoy physical fitness. I enjoy, it's a way for me to relieve some of my stress in life. I enjoy it. It's, it's just something I do, right? And, and, and I love when I meet people and I just feel bad for them, but I kind of chuckle too. They're like, man, you have no idea. I've been working out so hard for the last couple of days. And I'm like, bro, talk to me in two years. Like, talk to me in a while. Like, like you thinking that you're going to work this intense in the short term and it's going to fix everything overnight. It, it, it's wonderful that you have a yes in your heart to want to do that. But it's actually better if you slow yourself into something a little bit at a time. You're just thinking overnight you're going to change everything in a moment. That is a great recipe to not follow through with whatever you're doing. And, and, and I, I, it would be so silly if we were at the gym, right, and, and, and some guy showed up and he's like, bro, today at the end of my workout, when you see me, I'm going to look totally different than I did at the beginning of my workout. Like I'm going to work out so hard that all my, I'm going to look like the rock Dwayne Johnson at the end of this thing. I'm, my, my hair's going to fall out and be ripped. And it's like, dude, no matter how hard you work out today, it is not going to make you look like the rock Dwayne Johnson today. You're going to have to ease yourself into consistency over time instead of intensity in the short term right now. Nothing you're going to do is going to do that. But over time, something powerful can happen. And it's a word that we call compound interest. Say it with me. Compound interest. Now, I'm not going to bore you. I'm not going to get into the geekness of it. But compound interest is incredible. It's an investment that increases exponentially instead of linear. So, so, so most investments you think, well, if I give one and then I get one, then I have two. But compounding over time is exponential and it grows beyond what it should. And it's kind of this incredible thing that people study all the time. Albert Einstein, pretty smart guy, right? Albert Einstein said it like this. He said, compound interest is the eighth wonder of the world. He who understands it earns it and he who doesn't pays it. He who understands it, earns it, and he who doesn't, pays it. Which is over time, doing something right over and over and over again, over time, giving it time, will exponentially do something that you didn't think was possible. I I wish I had a visual way that I could show this to you, like dominoes. Oh, wait, I do have some dominoes right here. Now, we don't know if this is going to work or not, but we're going to find out. When you start, and I have an itty bitty one right here, itty little bitty one, right? Okay, little bit. When you start with the tiniest decision to say, I'm going to do the right things. I'm going to follow God with my, with my I'm going to get freedom financially. I'm going to get freedom emotionally, physically, spiritually. I'm going to be somebody in five years that I want to be, and I'm going to start it today. Today is this size of a decision. I'm saying yes to being a different person than I am, and in five years, I want to be way up here with where I'm at in life. Most of us are like, okay, God, I want it. Eh. Come on, come on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I, okay, I'm making a decision, God, so make the big things fall in my life. Make the big things happen the way that I want them to happen. God, I don't want to start here. This is like really humbling and tough, and I don't know what to do. I, like, this is really small. God, I really want it to be big. And you're like, well, fooey, God, I guess you don't work. I guess prayer doesn't actually move mountains. 
I guess God isn't real because that ginger told me he was, but I don't see it because I said one prayer and expect God to do it. See, we want these to fall, but we've got to be willing to start down here and humble ourselves and say, God, I know over time it's going to compound the interest and it's going to grow and grow and grow. And we're going to find out right now if it does in Jesus' name. Here we go. Are you all ready? Are you say yes. yes. Here we go. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Close. It's not a perfect science. <laughs> But here's a crazy thing. If I would keep this thing scaling, like a 20X on this scale, we would actually get to the Empire State Building in height. We just keep growing and compounding and compounding and compounding. And notice the length from here to here gets longer. The journey gets further. And I just want to encourage you. It starts down here that we say, God, I'm going to trust you in these little ways, these little things. The Bible says that the little foxes will spoil the vine. It will ruin. But the reverse is true. If I let you do the little work in my life, over time, mountains are going to fall in my life. Things that I thought could not will happen. But it's got to start right here. Some of y'all might think this is just some worldly idea. C.S. Lewis says this incredible quote when it comes to compound interest. He says, good and evil increase at compound interest. C.S. Lewis, good and evil increase at compound interest. So what does that mean? If you put good in over time, it increases with compound interest. If you put evil in, if you do not change your ways, if you do not say, God, I surrender everything I have to you, over time, that evil will triumph. And you'll look back and say, wow. What could I have been if I would have gave my life to God over these last five years? What could my life look like if I would have gave myself to community with other believers and actually fellowship with others in a meaningful, life-giving way? What could I have looked like if I would have read my Bible and learned a faith on my own, not just Doug's that he talks about on Sundays? What, my life, what could it look like if I would worship you and give you the praise you deserve and pray to you and allow myself to be connected to the power of God in my life. What could my life look like if I trusted you financially and quit trying to run the things of this world to satisfy only things that God it will satisfy in my heart? What if my resources reflected my love for you instead of just my selfishness for my own needs? I believe, church, that this 21 days of prayer and fasting could change your life. Because you're going to start right here with that little, little domino and say, okay, God, I'm letting it go. And I'm going to keep trusting you as time goes on. It will increase exponentially my time with you. Remember, what you let in is what you will be set in. The ways that you let in. What if you let in time of prayer and fasting with God? What if you led in a commitment to say, hey, everything else is going to rotate around me fellowshipping with other believers at church and being a part of the community instead of everything else getting my attention. I'm going to make a year. This year, I'm just not going to be somebody who's casual. I'm going to be leaning into the family of God this year. I'm going to be all about building family with my church instead of just coming and going as I please. I wonder what my life will look like if I could really develop myself in a way that increasing in good, not just increasing and bad. I just want to encourage you, this is the start of your next five years. I wonder who you'll be in five years. Would you stand to your feet with me? Why don't we just pray? Holy Spirit, we ask you to reach into every one of our hearts, whatever the area that we're holding on to that we're afraid to trust you in, Whatever that area is, would you just encourage us that you have ways and you have things to do with us that will blow our mind. That, 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 that honestly, we can't even see what it will be in five years, but if we could trust you, we could watch it unfold and look back from this message five years from now and say, that was the start of a major change in my life. Because I realize I have a part to play in this as well. God, you do your part, but I've got to be willing to do my part. I want, to, I want to ask you, church family, what are the things that you're letting in right now that maybe you shouldn't be? What are the things that you're, you're maybe 
it's something you're watching on a screen. Maybe it's a substance. Maybe it's listening to somebody that you really shouldn't be listening to. What are you letting in that you need to say, God, I need to, I need to let that go because I don't want to be set in that in my life. And then what are the things that you're not letting in that you're like, God, I know you want me to let this in. I'm sorry for holding this back from you and I'm gonna let you in. Holy Spirit, whatever those things are, deal with our hearts, speak to us, give us the courage to trust you and let us let compound interest do its work. Let us increase in good over time. We love you and we thank you. I bless these people to follow you. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, if you're here, I just want to encourage you, why don't we just worship Jesus together? And why don't we just press into his presence for a moment? And why don't we just sing and tell ourselves, God, this is for you this year. 2023, totally free. And I declare it and I believe it over me and my household. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, let's sing.